Our next recipient, one of the all-time great Georgia high school football coaches, and is sort of a soft spot for me. It's always great to see these guys being recognized here on the big stage. T. McFerrin. Before I get into my speech tonight, I want to introduce a young man who played center for us at Elbert County in 1994 and just finished his first full season as head football coach at Georgia Southern, where he turned that program around with a 10-win season, including a bowl win. Please welcome Coach Chad Lunchford and his wife, Tiffany. I'd like for him to stand. I'm very humbled and also very appreciative of this, which is obviously the greatest honor I've ever received. But I also know that the people and places who've been put in my life could not have been here without what God did for me. And I want to thank the good Lord for that every day. I took my first teaching and coaching job in 1965 in DeKalb County. And I was assigned to a, a new school that had not opened yet. And then several weeks later, I was changed from that school to Druid Hills High School, which was a real blessing because I met my future wife through her friends there at Druid Hills. And if I had not changed schools, I would never have known Jane Johnston, who's been my wonderful wife for over 50 years. <laughs> winning at all costs is often criticized, and rightly so. But I found that winning the right way can have a very positive effect on schools and communities. And I was told by an administrator one time that a winning football team can have a real positive effect on a, on a high school uh, and affect such things as attendance and grades and discipline. And I want to mention several schools that I've witnessed this in as a very positive thing. I took my first head coaching job in 1968 at Thonia High School. Bethonia had not had a winning season in 33 years, but I knew that integration was coming to DeKalb County, and Bruce Street was going to send us their students, and among those students were going to be some great athletes and some great football players, and there were. Our first year in 68, we lost one football game. In 69, as it showed on the video, Bethonia went undefeated and played for the state championship, losing a tough game in Vidalia 7-6. Winning was now happening at Lithonia in just about every sport, not because of me, but because of the smooth transition that integration had made on the school and the community. And I want to thank Tony McIntyre, who at that time was a sports writer, and wrote some very nice things about our players and about our staff and about me. And Lithonia was the pride in the school spirit in the town was over the top. In Lithonia, in the, four, in the three years I was there, we had three guys to make first team All-State, Tony Wade, Bill Kelly, and Calvin Cody. I took the Peachtree job in 1976, and it was a great place for our sons, Rob and Tom, to grow up and go through the school system there. And Tom later taught at Peachtree and then became principal at Dunwoody. In 1976, when we got there, Druid Hills had won two games the year before. I was able to bring in four great assistant coaches. And the coaches and the leadership that we had in the senior class, our co-captains, Chris Welton and Mike Fleming, did a great job of leading Peachtree to its first undefeated regular season, its first region championship, and its first trip to the playoffs. And Chris Welton, our quarterback, was named the Offensive Player of the Year by the Atlanta Touchdown Club. Chris signed with Georgia, started for three years on defense, and was a key member of the 1980 Georgia National Football Championship. That 76 team set a high bar for future teams over, uh, for our guys in the future. But our guys responded winning 72 games with four region championships in our seven years there and played for the state championship in 1982 in Valdosta, losing another heartbreaking loss 
10 to 7 in the last 33 seconds of the game. But even with that loss, school spirit and town pride and community pride was of epic proportions in the Peachtree Dunwoody area. Peachtree was later changed to a middle school. Guys who made first team all state for us at Peachtree were Chris Welton, Dan Hogan, Tommy Rose, Rob Schuler, Todd Rampley, and Jim Perry. In 1989, Tucker had a great football season. They went undefeated and played all the way to the quarterfinals of the state championships. We had two guys to make all state for us at Tucker, Kyle Frederick and Ricky Sutton. In 1990, I was fortunate to get the Elbert County job of head football coach and athletic director. Elbert County was winning, and they had a great principal, Dr. John Jackson. And he allowed me to bring in five assistant coaches who had college coaching experience. And those coaches and good players that we had at Elbert County won 75 games in our seven years there. And finally, a state championship in 1995. And the enthusiasm, the support, the pride, the school spirit that we had in Elbert County, in the school, in the town, and in the entire county is beyond description. We had seven players to make first team all state while we were there. Kenny Perlotti, Hal Reynolds, Rio Wright, Bobby Kidd, Sid Smith, Ken Hardman, and Ed Moss. In 19, and I retired that year. I thought I was retired for good. In 1998, our son Rob wanted to coach with that staff and coach with his father. We found one school that was available for a coach who would let us coach together, and that was South Gwinnett High School. South Gwinnett had not been winning, but I was told they had a very talented young quarterback coming along. They were right. David Green, in his junior year, took South Gwinnett to the state playoffs. In his senior year, he took South Gwinnett to the state playoffs. And David, of course, later went to the University of Georgia, where at Georgia, he broke Peyton Manning's record of all-time wins by a quarterback, 42 wins. All-time record broken of Peyton Manning's. He then set other records at Georgia and for the SEC. In 2009, I retired again at Georgia. My assistant said I retired about 10 times, but I, I just retired twice. I retired again, and in 2009, I got a call again from Dr. John Jackson, who needed a head football coach now at Jefferson. Dr. Jackson was now the superintendent of Jefferson County Schools, Jefferson City Schools, and he needed a football coach. I was talked out of retirement, and I'm certainly glad I was, because with the leadership of our quarterback, Brian Sheriffs, Jefferson, in 2012, won their first ever state championship. And they haven't really gotten over it, and I certainly haven't either. Uh, the celebration still goes on and on and on. And at Jefferson, I want to name the guys, if I can find it on my sheet up here, who were able to make all, first team all state. Lucas Red, Wesley Symington, Cody McDonald, and Brian Sheriffs. Dr. Jackson was responsible for getting me nominated to the Hall of Fame. He got Coach Bill Curry to nominate me in 2013, and Coach Vince Dooley, who's here tonight, to write me a very nice letter of recommendation. And I know that I would not be standing here tonight if Dr. Jackson had not initiated this. I would also like to thank two other people who helped me to get into the Hall of Fame. Todd Holcomb, who's a sports writer now for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution uh, all the time, and is also the co-owner of the Georgia High School Football Daily and the co-founder of the Georgia High School Football Historians Association, and knows more about my career than I know about myself, found four records that our teams hold today that I would have never found out about or even known about. And I certainly appreciate that, and I know that had to have helped get me into the Hall of Fame. The other person that you're well familiar with is, is Phil Schaefer, who was inducted here in 2016 and did the voiceover for these videos. 
Uh, Phil has been a great source of information and advice, and I know he made a big push to try to get me in, and I certainly appreciate that. In closing, I want to thank our wonderful friends who came here tonight in Groves to support my family and me. And I'd like for my players, managers, trainers, and coaches to please stand and take a bow for the hard work that you've done. If you would stand right now, I'd appreciate it. Thank you very much.